The guys upstairs, they're, they're working on the project. Not they, yeah. won't, they won't listen. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, I want to go with Tom. Good afternoon and welcome. Uh, I'd just like to share a little bit of uh, what we learned about uh, coming to, to lecture and uh, getting your visa papers filled out by international programs. Um, sorry about that. We're a little bit late uh, because we had some paperwork we had to fill out across campus. Uh, that means we're going we're gonna to go over a little bit. The lecture lasts about an hour and 15 minutes. Um, so if you think about what time we'll be getting out of here, it looks like it's going to be about 5.30. I'd like to ask if those of you that have meal plans that have to get out of here at 5 o'clock, please sit in the corridor so you can just sort of slip out and then our guards will lock the doors and you won't be able to get out. Um, but, uh, but if you need to slip out, don't, if you're sitting in the middle, uh, don't, you know, I, I want to try to avoid a, uh, the kind of uh, mass exodus that seems to happen at 5 o'clock. So uh, please uh, uh, bear in mind that the lecture will be an hour and 15 minutes and we'll, we'll be ending about 5.30 uh, this evening. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to, uh, to welcome uh, Bernardo Gomez Pimienta uh, to us here at Ball State. Uh, Bernardo is, uh, he was actually, uh, he was born in Brussels, in Belgium, and, uh, and he was edu educated at uh, the Universidad de Anahuac in, uh, in uh, Mexico, as well as receiving his Master's of Architecture in Columbia University in 1987. Um, I, I made the mistake of printing out the, uh, the PDF that goes along with his website, and it's a little book in and of itself in terms of all of his accomplishments, in terms of the publications of, of the work that, uh, that, uh, he's, that he's done, uh, as well as the projects that he's built. Uh, but I'd like to highlight just a couple of those things, uh, as well as some honors and some awards uh, that are important uh, to, uh, to point out. Um, we'll see a lot of recent work, and it's important also to understand that that Bernardo is going to show us projects at all scales. Um, uh, he, he represents a, a designer who, who sees the world as an opportunity to design things, no matter what scale. So we're going to see things from the scale of an espresso cup all the way up to a full-scale building, and even larger. Um, uh, Bernardo really is, uh, he represents the, uh, the sort of the, the passion of, of, of seeing the opportunities and designing things in this world, and he lives that life. And he's, he's a true inspiration uh, along those lines. Uh, he was uh, uh, one of the principals of Pan Architectos up until 2003, and now he's the dean at the Universidad de Anuac in Mexico City, as well as the principal of uh, his new firm called BGP that operates out of Mexico City. Uh, they're doing full-scale buildings. Uh, they're doing a lot of uh, an extensive list of projects, uh, which he'll explain to us. They're also uh, doing furniture and objects. He has a, a showroom in Paris uh, that, that, uh, that basically showcases the projects uh, that he's done for his objects and his furniture. He's in consultation with people in Spain uh, for doing some outdoor furniture as well along, along that line. Um, they have a base of operations in Mexico City for, uh, for building all of these furniture uh, pieces as well. So you're, you're really in for a treat. Um, uh, I've, I've forwarded a copy of PDFs of everything that I have in my hand here uh, to all of your professors. So if you're interested to, uh, to read through this, uh, this extensive list of his, his uh, accomplishments and work, uh, uh, please do so and ask your professors to, uh, to pass that along to you. Uh, so I'm not going to belabor the introduction by listing all of the different projects, uh, but needless to say, um, I'm very, very pleased to welcome to Ball State University Bernardo Gomez Pimienta. Oh, I I do this now. I just okay. Let me see. No. On. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear or? Yes. Well, it's, uh, I'm very pleased uh, to be here, and I'd like to thank uh, Kevin for the for the invitation. Uh, <coughs> and it's my first time in in Indiana. I haven't been here, so it's. Uh, I guess it rains every day. Uh, I mean, I'm, I have so many cables. I feel like I'm in a hospital. Right? Cables coming out. Uh, <coughs> uh, 
architecture has uh, has uh, architects have lost lots of uh, lots of terrain. Two hundred years ago, architects used to do most of the buildings, and two hundred years ago they split between architecture and engineering. Then, uh, until a century, on, on, until mid-century ago, architects used to do ma many, many other things besides of building. And that included uh, industrial design, graphic design, uh, textiles, fashion. And then little by little, because of uh, specialization, architects started losing that terrain too. And there's, there were growth of schools that were uh, starting to teach that as an in individual. Uh, piece, and uh, I believe it's uh, it's really a pity that uh, we as architects are not working in the different scales that uh, architects of other periods were used to, and I think it's uh, exactly the same process when you're thinking of a spoon, uh, or creating a spoon, than when you're creating a building, and sometimes let's say when you're doing a chair, you're thinking of how to put together six pieces. And when you're thinking of doing a building, it's, uh, you're thinking of 6,000 pieces. But the process is exactly the same. And uh, one of the important things in, uh, in the process is, of course, understanding the size, the size of the man uh, in order to, uh, because it doesn't matter if uh, to design a spoon, it's, uh, you have to know the size of, uh, of, of the mouth. And uh, in order to do a building, you have to understand exactly the size of a human being. Uh, so at the end, it's uh, exactly the same, uh, the same thing. Uh, of course, there's differences, and I will be talking about and about those. The work I'm going to show you is a work that uh, has been done in the last 10 years. Uh, some of it uh, is still in the, in the desks in the office. Uh, and it, uh, as, uh, as Kevin said, is a work that uh, varies tremendously in scale and in function. The program is very, very different. Uh, doing architecture is not, uh, is not a one man's uh, work. It's, it's the work of a team. And uh, all the work that you'll, you'll see is, uh, was developed in the office by, uh, by many, many people. Let me try to see if this works. Oh. This is the national the National School of, uh, of Theater. It was a competition that started uh, in 93. And uh, like many projects in Mexico, it had to be done very, very quickly because of uh, political time. The president had to leave office at the end of 94. And uh, every project that gets, every federal project that gets started has to be finished so he can inaugurate. Uh, the problem with that, and it happens very often, is that uh, you have to start doing construction document on something we call like a fast track thing. And uh, as soon as you start having, let's say, the basement plan, uh, you send that to the contractor, they start doing that, and simultaneously you're working on the first and second floor, and then you send them, and eventually you send the third floor. Uh, and uh, in that system, there's major problems, which are like, of course, it's impossible to know the budget of a, of a building, but and then at the, on the other side, it gives you a lot of uh, flexibility to, to be able to be changing things on the construction. That is something that doesn't happen here. Uh, the, the competition was, uh, they invited five firms. So all of us uh, submitted uh, projects for a whole campus of university. And then the jury decided that it was such a big project uh, that the best thing would be to give each of the teams one of the different schools. So we, we, we got the school, of, uh, the school of Theater. And, uh, uh, and the, the site plan was, they had to choose between the five, of the five of the projects to choose which one could accommodate uh, or could work better. And eventually it chose one, but there's really no relationship between the buildings, which is a pity. Uh, the building, is uh, is wrapped in this uh, in this shell in this steel shell, and you have really two kinds of buildings. One building that is the the programmatic part of the of the building, the building that uh, houses the school of theater and the different theaters, and uh, this other part that is this metallic shell that goes uh, at the whole length, that is uh, something like 300 feet in length, 
that covers the building. And then he creates something between the building and the shell that is those spaces that when you have a program, program programs in architecture are usually not done by architects. So they always forget the most important uh, uh, places in, uh, in, uh, in, in the different buildings. Uh, and because of our weather, we have a fantastic weather for most of the year, uh, you can use those spaces that are open spaces but covered throughout the, the rest of the year. So here, we, this, is, uh, uh, this is the corner of, uh, of uh, Churubusco and Tlalpan avenues that are very big streets. One of them, which is Churubusco, which is this one, has, uh, has a subway. But it's uh, a, a subway that is raised, so it's a visible subway. And the building, you can see the spaces in between So the most important spaces at the end are the ones that were created here, between the building and then between this. Of course, the shell has a relationship with the, within, with the, with the urban uh, landscape and the surrounding buildings. These were the Churubusco uh, warehouses where they make movies. And this, the scale of these buildings that are four of those huge boxes relate to the size of this one. And then, the most important spaces were the ones created in the middle. The building here is clad in uh, these wood louvers that protect the building from two sides. One from the, from the sun, and the other one, inside you have all the classrooms to teach, so students can really start jumping or whatever uh, without being seen from the outside. Here you have, in this, uh, in this area here, you have the main theater, which is like the heart. The building goes around the theater, which is in this part here. And then on the other side, there's a, uh, a black box theater. In between, they have lots of services. All the dressing rooms are in between them. There's one level to go down to all the storage uh, for scenography and uh, suits and all that. One level for offices, and then three levels of the school. And here you can see again that the wood louver totally blocks the perspective and gives uh, lots of freedom uh, and uh, privacy to the students above. That's uh, the space I was, I was telling you about. And here, what we wanted to do was, because it's a theater school, to be able to break uh, what was happening and uh, not being very clear at who's acting and who's, uh, and who's, uh, who's acting and who's the spectator. And what happens is that here you have the, cor the service corridor that uh, we could see on the other side. The offices are here and then the three stories. All the corridors run here. So people here are always staring. Here you have the stairs that we'll see in a, in a few minutes. And then you have all the platforms, the main theater with a high tower of 29 meters. Then this volume in the air is the library. And here all this terrace is the, is the, the reading room. And you in between these, uh, these two shells, you know, the between the shell and the, and the building. The materials that we'll see are, uh, are, uh, are natural. So it's the, the floor is lava floor. These walls are made of marble, travertine marble, unsealed travertine marble. And then there's several kinds of concrete. Concrete uh, with, with uh, very thin pieces of wood as a formwork or as a plywood. And then what the other Sarah was telling you about, and then this very big plane of glass that has, uh, <coughs> that has the text speaking about uh, what acting is and, uh, uh, and the citations of uh, contemporary theater uh, directors uh, speaking what, uh, what acting is. That's the main entrance. So the pipes are these two feet pipes that were bent in six uh, different uh, diameters are eventually uh, joined to the floor by these pieces, and this piece weighs more or less like one ton, and is being fixed by some screws. And then the cables inside work both for uh, for tension and for uh, well for suction and for uh, uh, for suction and for weight, their own weight. And then you go the first level you hit through a ramp and through the stairs is a mezzanine, and then from the mezzanine you go directly to the to the theater. This is the second uh, building that, uh, that won the Mise en Deroux Award uh, in uh, 1998. And it's on the site in Mexico City 
that is, this is uh, uh, Chapultepec Avenue, and it's the triangular site where a building was standing and it collapsed in, 19, in the earthquake of uh, 85. And it's a service building that houses on the first floor, it's uh, mostly parking and the machines. Then this space is mostly of the offices, like uh, doctors, dentists, uh, syndicate. And then the shell is, uh, is a restaurant to do some uh, 6,000 meals a day. So it's almost like a factory, like cows come one day on one side and then uh, have hamburgers on the, on the other. Uh, and the, the idea was to also have a giant space where you could put everybody working in the, in the company, from the president and owner to the, to the people that uh, do the cleaning. And everybody were eating exactly the same, uh, in the same space and they could share that, that moment. The, the vault is uh, an ellipsoid vault uh, made of uh, metal pieces of zinc and each of them is a different uh, dimension and a different curvature. And there's no way to, uh, to put any membranes or waterproofing between them. They had to fit perfectly one against, uh, against the other. The, the shell rests on these joints. So the, the, slab, the slab holds the joints and holds the roof on, in this point. And then it goes, uh, it goes up. And uh, the dis there's a one layer of columns that is more or less here. And then it goes like 60 feet all the way to the other, to the other side. Uh, here we, something that uh, was not planned was that the logo, the logo of the company is this circle, well, like an ellipse with some stripes. And people now say that we were inspired by the logo to do the building. And it was really a coincidence that uh, we didn't realize at the, at the time one is more uh, the dining room. People come through a ramp in the back. They have a, a courtyard here, and then they can come through all these doors. And then there's uh, all the all the all the food is here, so you can have all the people. And all the colors again are uh, very very neutral: grays, whites, and blacks. And uh, the importance is just the space, not to have that uh, huge space. This is a much smaller project and that's something uh, Kevin was, uh, was speaking about these uh, uh, small espresso cups. Uh, I like uh, coffee to be very small, to be very, very thick like uh, Italian espresso. And uh, usually what happens in Mexico is that in most restaurants they fill the cup with water so it becomes a watery thing that is really not coffee anymore. Uh, so I had the idea of what could happen if you have a cup that is so small that even if they fill it, uh, it would still be an espresso. Uh, so again, now working as an architect, uh, I did some, uh, some models of the cup and started going to different manufacturers. And what happened was that most of them said, we're so busy selling cups and plates that uh, we, don't, we don't want or we're not interested in having uh, another model of, uh, of cup. But why don't you take our model and you can paint it, you can have it yellow flowers or with stripes, and that can be very, very easy. So eventually, after two years, uh, a manufacturer wanted to, to, um, to build it, well, to, to start producing it. And then after that, the whole, uh, uh, the whole set came about, no plates, uh, cups, and uh, the whole thing. And that was done for a hotel that we'll see in a, in a minute. So the piece, different pieces of big jars, small cups, that's for a, a small cup for an ex the espresso, a cup for a tea, and then one of the big ones. So you can really have uh, one of those uh, frozen uh, coffees. And so saucepans. This was the first model of uh, a butter holder, and that's eventually as it turned out. So you came up, you come to your table, and you have all the elements of the china set are exactly the same shape and the same dimension, which is. Uh, two by three inches. So you have the sugar thing, the, the, the teacups, the butter, and then depending on how you open them, you discover what's inside and, uh, and the vari variations between them. Then eventually, <coughs> I was th that, that's uh, Carlos Carpa. I uh, designed some, um, some blown glass uh, objects 
and Scarpa was doing that in the 40s, uh, working with, uh, with Benini. And uh, again, the same story. I, uh, I had some designs, I went to see different factories, not much happened, they were too busy. And then I was uh, teaching together with Kevin at the University of Illinois. And just next to the architecture building, there were some, the art, the art school, where they had some fantastic uh, blown glass uh, uh, spaces. So the idea was, well, I was able to, to become friends of one of the, of the professors. And uh, <coughs> we'd start doing some of, the, uh, some of these things. This is the fruit holder. And uh, in one of the books of Scarpa, he says that uh, when you put glass uh, in the oven with certain gases, you can have some iridescent uh, effects. So I said, wow, that sounds fantastic. Why don't we try that? And well, maybe, maybe the whole school will blow up. So uh, eventually we try that. And uh, here the vase is done with, uh, with two different colors of, uh, of beige or brown glass. And one of them was, uh, was put in the oven with, uh, with this gas and it has these iridescent lines. And that's more or less what you see here when it's like this grayish thing is the iridescence in the, in the glass. This is um, another uh, fruit bowl, but here the, the, the color of the glass, instead of, being of coming in glass in color, is like a powder, like sugar, and it's sprayed on the, on the glass. And this was a, a, a flower vase, and the idea was the, having the shape of the flowers to dictate the shape of the vase, and then taking very dark, opaque glass, to remember or to uh, to remind you of the of the way the 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 flowers go in the in the water and how they hold, so you have these vertical elements that that go on from side to side. This was one of my first tables, and here, one well, one of the important things, uh, and I learned that doing a chair is that uh, doing a model when you're doing furniture doesn't work. Here, the, the system for the chair is you have three feet, you have a star made of stainless steel with perforations, and then you have uh, very small elements that triangulate, and the structure works like a bridge. So it's a very light table, and at the same time, it's very, very stable. And uh, the rods, the stainless steel rods are continuous, so you have this, this, they go here, and then they go on the other side. And the ones on top, again, form a continuous string that that forms this. And then uh, this, this star is floating in the air, just being held by the, by the table. These are chairs I will see in a, in a minute, and that's when I discovered that models don't work. This is another table. Here's a table, it's a very, very simple table that has the, this rod with a, with a screw and then some, uh, some elements that hold the glass and then again this cable or this little rod that is continuous and holds the, the horizontal plane in, uh, in place. And, and here you can see how the cable, the rod just goes up and just uh, is not weld or anything, just turns and is being held. And then you of course you have all the little elements to, to, uh, uh, to level the table. This uh, a chair that uh, I started doing, working with it in sketches, then in uh, making models. And then when finally the first prototype arrived, uh, you discover that the, the only way of trying a chair is not working with models, but sitting on it. And then you can raise it, change an angle. So at the end now what we do is, uh, uh, when we're working in industrial design, we work with, uh, with the object and we make prototypes that are on the materials that should be on the, fi on the finished material at the scale one to one, and that's the only way of, of working. So it's a very single, very simple structure, stainless steel structure, and then a metal aluminum plate that is bent, and uh, at the same time, the arms hold the, the back, and the back, of course, of, of, uh, simultaneously holds the arm. So it's uh, two structures that uh, help each other, and uh, the work each does is very clear. And then little by little, the, the legs 
became simpler. M before, there used to be thicker here, and then now it's exactly the same diameter. But this is stainless steel, and this is some kind of plastic. And uh, the, the diameter is the same. And then uh, some perforations for water, so the furniture can be outside. We got a competition to do a, hot a small uh, boutique hotel, the first bo boutique hotel in Mexico City. Uh, and uh, they were starting uh, all over the world. And the idea is to have a small design hotel that uh, people going from one city to the other can enjoy. And uh, you're not a number. You are, they know your name. And this has only 20, well, 36 rooms. The idea was to take an existing building, which was from here to here. That's uh, another brother. And uh, we could not tear it down for two reasons. One, the, the code in that area had stipulated that now the, the, the new height was three stories. So this was much higher than, uh, than the, new, uh, the new code allowed. And the other thing is that this site is built 100% of the site is built. And now we had to leave some 30% uh, uh, of the site open. Uh, so the looking at that, there was no option but to leave the building as it was and uh, try to remodel it. And the competition was we 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 came with the idea of uh, wrapping the building in this new skin of glass of this sandblasted glass to give it a new uh, a new look. And at in the daytime, it would reflect or hopefully it would reflect the different conditions of the sky, the color of the sky, the clouds, and at night it would become like a giant lamp. And the idea was to have every room uh, connected to the exterior lights, so depending the, depending on people were coming and going, the light would be changing. And then uh, something that would be different from, uh, well, uh, the program asked for a store, the main entrance that was on the lateral street, and then eventually this changed. And then we came up with the idea of using the roof as a, as a terrace. So having a whole floor of a spa, a terrace across a bar, and then a swimming pool. So that was not on the, on the program. And again, at the end, this, these are the best spaces of the, of the whole building, the spaces that happen, happen on the roof of the, um, of the hotel. The idea of the perforations on the sandblasted glass were to from certain points in the room to choose either a tree or a bunch of trees uh, to direct the views as if they were painting. And the rest to make, a, to make a huge wall of wood where it's everything is just doors. And then depending on your, if you touch them, the table comes down, the chairs appear, the TV, the, the bar, the stereo. So when you come into the room, it's an empty room. And then little by little, things start appearing. So we won the competition, <coughs> and then uh, this was several years, uh, several years later. The, now the main entrance is through Masari, which is the main, the main avenue. There was no space for the, uh, for the store. The restaurant is one restaurant here, then four stories of, uh, of rooms, and then the bar and the spa on, uh, on top. The idea was that the bar would be just for the, for the 40 rooms. So it would be a very, very quiet bar where people could have a whiskey afterwards. And it became uh, like the trendy bar in town. So every night there's like four or 500 people on top. Uh, so that's a problem because the whole thing here, the whole street gets so crowded, it's impossible to go far. And at the day, uh, it really happens that the building reflects what's going on outside, the color of the sky, the color of the, of the clouds. And at night, uh, the use of the rooms make it changing, make it that the, the appearance of the building changes all the time. The, the facade is very, very simple. It's a huge uh, plates of glass that are around uh, 10 feet in, uh, in height and they are fixed by two screws at the bottom and two screws at the, at the top. And the glasses are not touching, so there's like little gap between glass and glass, and uh, so it's a non-existent. That's why it's so uh, so transparent. And then while you have that grid for cleaning, uh, the grid on top uh, helps helps cleaning. And then the, at the bottom, that's the ground floor. We uh, we asked an artist that is uh, uh, his name is Jan Hendricks. 
to do a work of art. So here on the ground floor, he did uh, pieces of metal that are cut, and it's one, one, uh, uh, one artwork, and he used exactly the same one in the, in, the, in the floors of the rooms, and then exactly the same one on the, in, the, in the swimming pool. But this one is in bronze, in the rooms it's on paper, and then on top it's on ceramic. So it's exactly the same uh, work, but on different media. And origi originally, the ground floor was, uh, was parking. So it was, uh, all the beams were original beams and it was not very clean. So it, you could tell that this one is here and it's not coming and then there were some changes. So uh, it's really a mess. And we decided in order not to lower the, the floor that is already very tight, to leave the existing beams as they are uh, exposed and just trying to, uh, to put some new elements like the, like the reception, this glass reception that looks like this volume that is lit, the stainless steel wall on the back, the new floors, and trying not to, to, uh, to reduce either the height of the floor or the diameter of the columns. Because now the columns were going through four or five different changes in code and uh, they had to be fatter. So the reinforcing was done in steel in order not to make it uh, much fatter than the original one. And that's the, the, the restaurant on the ground floor. And here you can see again the, the mess with the, with the beams, you know, that some bigger ones, some fatter ones. This one doesn't have, it's not continuous. And some people still go to the, to the restaurant and ask when the building is going to be finished. Well, the rooms with the, with the slots, with the views. And then the, the, the space I prefer in the hotel, on this part on top, where you have this uh, good, uh, good deck. So it's, uh, it's really like uh, you're approaching like a boat that just uh, has uh, arrived to the city and you have the, this beautiful landscape of, the, of town and uh, you have this very wide, what looks like a very wide swimming pool, but at the end it's very light. So how can you make a wide swimming pool that is very light? So at the end it's like a beach. It becomes at zero and then little by little it becomes deeper and deeper and then it, that's, this is the part that became the fashionable uh, bar and it's still very, very crowded every day. And here you can, you can tell, it's, uh, here the water has zero deep depth and then little by little it is deeper and then it's a uh, channel so you can swim at the end. And that's uh, the giant Hendrix piece on, uh, on top. And here again it was something similar that happened with, uh, with a cup and with a, a blown glass. Uh, we started going to some local manufacturers of ceramic and uh, all of them said, no, no, we're too busy, we're doing too much, this is too small. So eventually after looking at four or five of those uh, manufacturers, uh, Jan went to, uh, to Delft and in Delft there was a factory that had 500 years doing ceramics he, and he was able to go into the, into the factory. They were giving him all the different ceramic plates, he could draw them or paint them and then put them in the oven and then the next day he could see them and he had the new ones so he could do that work uh, every day and then we put them in boxes and we could bring them. And when the, the manufacturers that had uh, refused to do it uh, saw the amount of, uh, of publications that were coming out of the hotel, they were real sovereign. Said, oh no, now we can do it. Oh well, now it's too late. Yeah. The bar, where the, here the idea is the the lightning of the, of the bar becomes the, the back wall with the, with the liquor. So the liquor becomes the, the lightning. This is a very small house uh, in a small town some two hours away from Mexico City. And it's a, a town that has a lake where people go for, uh, for weekends. Uh, it was a very steep uh, house, well, a very, a very steep site. And uh, there is very, there's very strict local laws. Uh, and the house is, is this. Uh, and there were some existing walls of stone and the idea was keeping those stone walls and then covering them with the vegetation so the site and the, and the walls could be, become the same thing. And people go there for a weekend to have a view on the lake. Uh, and the, the strange thing is that the, the houses, the existing houses have, uh, ha have very little view. The roof stick down and the windows are very small. So the roof stick down and the windows are really, really small. No, this is the window, this is the window, the roof, the roof stick down. 
And the, so what we did is turning the, the roof the other side so we can have a fantastic view of the lake, the mountains, and a lot of sky, and then having a, glass, a house that is uh, mostly a glass or a glazed volume. And then it's uh, oriented towards the south, so the glass volume sticks out, and then we have this little canopy that uh, protects uh, from the sun on the, on the south. Uh, it's a mono space. It's a space that is a living room, dining room, and kitchen. And uh, this, from this column to this column, it's like six meters, which is six, some 18 or 20 feet. So it's a huge door of glass that slides. So this space, the whole space becomes empty. So the whole living room becomes, uh, becomes a terrace. Uh, looking towards the, the lake and the, and the mountains. And here was the first case where uh, I was able to design not only the architecture, but uh, all the furniture and, the, and so all the couch, chairs, tables, china, flower vases, everything was uh, specially designed uh, in this house. Uh, and the, color, the system for construction of the, of the roof is very, very straightforward and very traditional. So you have these wood beams, then uh, wood plaques and then the tiles the, on, on top. So it's very, very light and that allows that columns are very thin. And by being in stainless steel, they project or they reflect the colors of whatever is around them and they really disappear in space. The materials, again, are very neutral. So the importance is what happens outside. The, the trees, the vegetation, the lake, the mountains, the, the, the clouds, that's really the important, the important thing. On the other side of the, of the living, room, living room here, we have some these other doors that pivot, and you have this courtyard and the swimming pool. So really, when you're in the, in the living room, your space goes from this wall all the way to the mountain. And by having the swimming pool on the other side, uh, it, the swimming pool is protected from the wind, uh, so you can use it even at night. And the bottom, the bottom of, of the glass of these doors is transparent. So when you're uh, standing at the swimming pool, you can see through the whole house, and you can see the lake through the furniture that is very light. Now this is almost standing on the, on the water, uh, through the courtyard, through the house, and then the lake at the, at the end. The space, well, uh, the, the kitchen at the end, so it's uh, uh, the living room, dining room, and then the, the kitchen, the carved kitchen in the little volume. This volume is the, the bathroom, so behind you, you have the continuity of the, of, the, of the roof that goes from side to side, and then the main bedroom is on the, at the end over there. And then you have two bedrooms at the bottom. And again here, all the columns and the, and the handrails were stainless steel, so they, they, as I said before, they disappear. That's the, the, the doors that pivot here. They have a very sophisticated system to hold them in place two rods. And this is the main, uh, the main bedroom. So the sun uh, starts here. So very, very early, uh, you get some sun on in the bedroom. So people wake up really early. And the bed is very low. So the first thing they see is underneath the table, they see the lake. Uh, even the bathroom has a view towards the lake. So when you're uh, taking a shower or whatever, you always see the the lake. The, the house was built in, in, six, in six months, so it was a very, very fast uh, construction. And the whole system is, uh, is a mechanical. So you have the, the slab, then you have the stainless steel columns, then the, the joints, this, uh, this piece that varies depending on uh, what work they're doing. And then the I-beam that has a plaque with a wood beam that has a screw, and then the whole house is, uh, is done. This was a, a chair that was done uh, for the house, and it's a cantilever, cantilever chair, so it's a stainless steel frame. And uh, the idea is we weren't able to get these cables that are woven. So the first thing was with, uh, uh, with some wicker, and then eventually we were able to find this, uh, this plastic, this uh, transparent or colored plastic that could be woven. And, uh, and it's impossible to understand it's a chair until it's, uh, until it's woven. So it's, this goes all the way up 
and then you have this other leg, and then the side, the, the arm, the armrest becomes the chair. It can be on the water. So it's very, very simply, simply done, simply woven. This is a table that uh, <coughs> most tab glass tables are not, uh, are not structured. The glass is not working. So the idea was trying to make a table where the glass would be structural. H how to, to make that? So the idea was making these very, very simple legs screwed to the surface, and then the glass will be, will be working. And, and it comes, uh, finally, it, uh, it came a, a, a set of uh, tables that uh, have different dimensions and different heights, and even different colors that we'll see. The detail is very straightforward, and then the glass gets uh, colored. So sometimes it's green or yellow or orange or purple, depending, I guess, on the color of the fruits uh, you like. This was a house that uh, didn't happen and it's, uh, it's a pity. We took the site and we start putting some lines of different uh, materials going around it. The house is an inverted T, so you have this as service and then this volume here. So you arrive, you go up through a ramp, here you have a guest, guest room, and then you arrive to this, through the ramp to this space that has no columns, so it's the living room and dining room, and this is 90 feet and it has no columns whatsoever, and it's only glazed. And the living room has double height. So you see, and there's only this glass stair hanging in the space, and no structure whatsoever. But on top of that, there's a floor. So that it, you take another ramp, and you arrive to the main bedroom, and there's a huge beam that goes from side to side, taking those 90 feet, uh, making those 90 feet possible. And then if you go down, you keep walking on the stair, and then finally you're in a lap pool. And here we have gymnasium with a sauna, uh, massage things, and then another pool uh, and some different vegetation, wood deck, uh, bamboos, uh, plants that smell. And then all, the, all those different stripes make this microclimate where you have the house, this is the floor that has no structure, the living room, dining room, the main room, the main bedroom, and uh, the main level, and then the sauna with a swim pool that goes this side. And then all put into, into this micro, micro uh, space, you know, where we could control the views from side to side. That's the main space with the, that doesn't have any structure, and the beams would be, would be here. A niece uh, sitting in, uh, in the living room who came to visit. Yeah, here more or less the, the space is not how the ramp wraps around the houses, around the house. That's a client uh, that came to see us uh, and, want, and wanted a house. Uh, the house has, uh, has two levels and it's very, very simple project. It's one bar that has all the private bedrooms and then another bar but fl flying. So you have the vestibule and then the other bar is flying. And here terraces and swimming pool. And then when you go up through the vestibule, you have this bar which is all the public. So you have a living room, dining room, which is a glazed uh, floor, kitchen and studio. And the roof of the, of the bedroom becomes this huge terrace. And this is in the city of Guadalajara, where the weather is uh, throughout most of the year very, very nice. So you can really be outside. So even on that terrace, with, with this wood deck, we have, again, a new dining room, a, a new living room. And these would be the spaces that they'll be using most of the, uh, most of the year. And the sections are, are very simple. The low volume with, uh, with private stuff and then the, the, the public spaces, the living room and dining room. And you can hear again exactly the same section. And it's the opposite. Here is the bedrooms, and the, the, the public living room and dining room are sticking out and are flying 40 feet. So it's a huge cantilever of 40, 40 feet that goes sticking out in this sloping, sloping site. 
that's the main uh, elevation from the street, so you have the volume, the perpendicular, perpendicular volume of the, of the private, of the rooms, and then the flying living room and dining room. The house is uh, already under construction, uh, and that's, uh, the client decided to have, to, to build off-site the, the cantilever, so they built these huge beams, uh, and they took a huge crane of 90 tons, and in one day we had the second floor built. So that's how they were, they were taking the slabs, putting them into the, in place, and then uh, after that they just poured the concrete, the two slabs of the floors, and then you can already see the, the 40 feet uh, cantilevering of the, of the living room and dining room. This is the swimming pool with the terrace, the garden, the volume of the bedrooms, the terrace on top. Here we are standing, let's say, at the end of the, of the studio, looking towards the living room. The dining room with a floor made of glass would be here, double height. Here we have a, a dome. Uh, to understand this, uh, this vestibule that has some water underneath on the ground level that goes as in, as inside and outside, and then the rooms, and uh, this would be the deck. This, just a little bit later, the, the, the 40 feet cantilever. Again, the same, uh, the same photo we had seen. This was like three weeks ago, so the, the whole volume is already uh, clad. This has to be covered in wood, the same as the deck, because it's the same volume. All the flowers here are already, are already in place. Yeah, this was like three weeks ago, so here you can <coughs> start looking at the, the 40 foot uh, thing sticking out. This. Uh, this is the dining room, so this should be glass, glass floor, and again, living room and the studio at the end. All this will be the, the, the uh, water underneath in the vestibule. Now again, looking from the, from the studio towards the living room. Now here, this should be a grass, so this should be the garden the terrace that are now is being clad in, uh, in stone. Hmm. These are, this is another project just next to it. After this client, another one came and uh, the house is here, so now they wanted on this side seven, seven houses. So the idea was to do like seven volumes where uh, just like throwing them like dice and having those uh, all the houses are here, just one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Here you have the original house that is being, uh, that is almost finished, so you have all these sites. So we have a big swimming pool and all these little volumes that were just thrown. Uh, every house is a little bit different. It's around uh, 2,500 2, square feet each. Couple of sections where you see the little volumes of uh, single material and uh, all the little volumes in concrete that are the little houses. So it's just throwing them in the, in the landscape. Yeah, some of them start bending depending on the orientation and the location for the windows and the views. We have a very nice uh, part here at 45 degrees, and that's the reason for the ha this house having these two, two angles and the terrace, so they can look towards the park in this, uh, like one block away in this area. And these houses have again this uh, tilt in order to allow the view towards the park. This is a studio of a painter. I did a house, a house for him uh, something like 17 or 18 years ago. And now he, he needs more space. Uh, this studio, again, is the same town where the, the house with the lake in a uh, town called Valle de Bravo. And uh, he wants now 
one bedroom more and uh, his studio to paint. So that's the original house. It's a little cube uh, made of brick, of local brick, uh, mm. that is uh, made uh, in the village. And uh, it, the, the interesting thing is we made the walls. And then when uh, it was finished, we painted in black. And uh, the guy who makes the bricks has the, lays the bricks on the floor. And the kids and the, and the animals start playing. And uh, we didn't notice at first, but then you can see little feet of uh, children, hands, uh, feet of chicken, of dog, and they start appearing only when you paint it. So it was, uh, it was very surprising to see that uh, those little marks on, the, on each brick. Uh, the house is uh, in the middle of a beautiful orchard that now they already planted here, and the idea was having it at, uh, at the end next to these little volumes. This is the original house, so this will be the guest, new guest room, a deck, and the studio for the painter. The roof of the studio is uh, a water, uh, a water, a fountain, and a little terrace. And he already has another fountain in here. Uh, we we take some of the of the sides of the of the land to put the room here the studio, and then this is the water. So the view when you're in the room, you, you see this water thing, this water surface in here. So the, the studio really disappears in the landscape. And now we're deciding what color uh, the building should be. And uh, it's covered around and it's surrounded by, uh, by banana trees. And uh, we were figuring out the color of the, of the shadow of the, of the banana trees, and it's almost totally black, so we're thinking of having the house on this hill totally black, so it really, you really lose it uh, underneath the banana, the banana leaf. This is a Vermeer doing a drawing. And, and he has a beautiful garden of, uh, of desert plants. And then this will be the view from the, from the bedroom, looking towards the, the fountain on top of the, of the studio. This is a, a project in Acapulco. That's the ocean, the beach, but the site is cut by a, by a highway, by a road. So you have part of the site that is on the, on, the, on the beach and part of the site that is in the back. So the idea was having a, high, a higher building here with view of the ocean and the beautiful gardens, swimming pools, and the smaller buildings uh, in the back. The, the idea of the apartment was very, very simple. It's uh, better here. It's uh, inverted T, so you have double height, the living room, dining room, and then you have either bedrooms or kitchen in low space, and these inverted T's could be, uh, could be joined together. Uh, and this would be the view uh, towards the ocean with double height, double height space, and then in this case, uh, one of the rooms was, uh, was transformed into a studio. And the, the scheme allowed you, if you wanted, or you don't need that much space, to only buy part of the tea with the double height and only one bedroom and a kitchen, or the whole, the whole tea, or if you, want more, if you want more to start getting some more space. So the, the space could grow depending on the, on the needs of, uh, of each family. So the building could start being like this, but then eventually, depending on, on, the, on, the, on the needs of the family, it could turn into this. This is a theater, a remodeling of the theater. Uh, the theater is a blob that was uh, built in the 1942, a concrete blob. Uh, just this concrete shell, it's been painted in, uh, and waterproofed many, many times in the, in the last uh, 50 years or whatever. And now we want to, to uh, transform it into, into, uh, again into this concrete shell as it originally was, and then doing all the interior. So the idea was to have uh, the theater to make it very, very dark with some uh, lateral walls of glass that could work as lamps. The vestibule, again, 
very, very dark. And then underneath, we have five rooms to, to make a congresses that would be at, at, on the opposite, uh, totally white. So the, 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 the blob, this, this shape, it would be the vestibule and the, and the rooms with a, with a mezzanine. And then the, uh, the space below. So this would be on the underground. Now those five rooms would be on the ground. And it's part of this huge complex of uh, social security uh, ministry uh, sections. This should start uh, construction in January. This is a competition we don't know yet uh, about some housing. It's in the corner of uh, a very nice neighborhood called the Colonia Roma in uh, Mexico City. And it's just next to a park. So we have this beautiful site. These three houses, the other corners, are houses made in 1910. So it's beautiful uh, stone houses. And we were asked to do some 32 apartments in this area and to transform this tower of uh, 15 stories into housing. Now it's, it used to be uh, offices and a garden in between. So the apartments, uh, every apartment has a little courtyard. So how we were able to put the 32 of them together and then very quickly through it. And then the same uh, facade elements start uh, wrapping the building, in, uh, the tall building to make it, uh, to make the apartments. And these precast pieces start sometimes turn and become canopies or protect the sun depending on the orientation. Well, the interior garden, these little volumes sticking out. Some of them were very, very plain with almost no windows to, ag to allow privacy. And then the private <coughs> courtyard. This is a building that is now under construction. Uh, <coughs> this was a house that was cataloged, so we could not uh, tear it down. Uh, and the owner wanted originally to do six, six apartments. Uh, when she discovered that uh, the, pr the, house, the original house was a catalog, uh, she was not too happy about it. But then he made, uh, it's a developer, they made 11 projects and uh, introduced them to the Institute of, uh, of Beaux-Arts in Mexico City. And the 11 projects were, uh, were not approved. So eventually he called us. And what uh, we agreed with uh, the Beaux-Arts Institute was to keep most of the house destroy the service rooms that were in the back, be able to do three apartments in the back and keep the house as a single, as a single entity, as a single, single apartment. And it's just next to the, to, the French, uh, to the French embassy. So that's the street. To here we're doing a fountain. We're keeping the house. And then here we're doing this apartment with living room and dining room, bedrooms and service, all the service on one side and looking towards a courtyard in the back and a courtyard in the front. Uh, the second story, you have the bedrooms of the house, double space, double height, and again, another apartment. Here we were studying the options of how to keep this uh, house that is not, nothing particular, it's nothing, nothing to write home about, uh, that was done in the, in the 40s, and how to be able to put the apartments on, in the back. And then we had some regulations that we only could build up to nine meters. Uh, so how to be able to put those three apartments plus the parking underneath, that is the parking is here, into those, those nine meters. But then we discovered that there's one regulation or one of the, the rules that says the nine meters can be at the bottom of a sloped roof. So taking the idea of the original house that has sloped roof, we started working uh, on sloped roofs to see, and that way we could, uh, we could fit uh, one more apartment. So the original house, and then uh, the original house, the, uh, the, the parking, and then the three apartments here, and one of them is, has this huge space on top, so we have here a double, double height uh, apartment, and we're able to, to fit them. And again, what we told them was that this shape related to the original shape of the little mushrooms on top of the house. So we were in a, in a way reinterpreting uh, that uh, 70 years later. 
This is another building that was cataloged again by the Bozar Institute. So it was uh, a big site where uh, we kept the house at the corner and we designed 32 apartments going around it with a private uh, pedestrian street in the middle. So the, the original house was here. These are the 32 apartments on four stories and then the, the pedestrian road. This is starting construction again in January. So I'll plans, two levels of parking underneath, the pedestrian street, the four levels, that's parking, and that's the house and two levels on top of the house. Uh, here what we have is the, the original house, we have the, the volume sticks out, and this, uh, we're thinking of having it a bright, well, very dark red uh, color, so we're, uh, we're talking back with, uh, with the with institutes and they're, and they're happy with the idea and the idea of being able to, to keep that. So it's a glazed, uh, this facade is made of five different kinds of And it's the client wanted two towers of 27 stories to have 104 apartments. Uh, <coughs> that's more or less the view towards the back. We have a golf club and exhibition center. And towards the front, it has a fantastic view of the, of the bay. And we're just, just here. And that's now the view from the back. From the, from the back on mountains, you have the golf club and our building would be this. But that's the early study we did, and now the facade has, has changed. The site is uh, just 50 meters from the beach. That it has no beach. That's the main road of, uh, of Acapulco. So we're doing the towers are here. Now they, they're linked, so it's only one. And we're having a lot, lot of water and lots of uh, space to, to, uh, to take the sun. The building is really more like different uh, volumes that stick out. So instead of having a single mass, we wanted to divide that and to really have like five different volumes. So it's a glazed volume, the living rooms, the elevators. So to have really a, a series of vertical elements. And then how the, uh, it's like an oasis, how all this enormous quantity of water goes and becomes sometimes fountains, sometimes pools, some of them have fish. And now how you see it from the other side, you know, how you have those vertical towers that are one against the other, and each of them has a different uh, geometry. Uh, we even have a beach. One of the sides. We have parking underneath. It's, uh, well, parking, the swimming pools have uh, like a topographical uh, activity, so it, you have the pool here, you have, a, you have a slide with water and then another swimming pool here, so kids can really start playing from one level to the other. That's an old model, old model, the, the facades are, are changing. And that's uh, a project that we just learned uh, this week, it's on uh, Reforma Avenue, which is the main street of, uh, of Reforma. And uh, the strange thing is that there are two sites, and it's just at the corner. This avenue was, uh, was done by Maximilian, the emperor of, uh, of Mexico in, 18, uh, in 1860. And uh, he wanted to do uh, a big avenue uh, after the Champs-Élysées in Paris from his castle on Chapultepec to the center of downtown. So he, he did this street uh, taking the idea of the Champs-Élysées in Paris. And then eventually it was uh, modi well, it was, uh, uh, made bigger, but he made a turn, and now Reforma has, uh, has this curve. So we got the, the two buildings just where, the, where Reforma starts. So the original, that's uh, Chapultepec, that's the castle, that's the avenue, and we're just here, one on each side, and that's where it turns and becomes, again, the new section of, uh, of Reforma. Here we have the biggest, the biggest building in Latin America, which is, I don't know, like, uh, 60 stories or 70 stories, I don't know how, how big, it's a huge thing. And our site is, part of it is here and part of it is 
is here. Uh, <clears throat> this is from the entrance of the park. So that's the reforma, that's the axis. We're exactly on axis, that's how it turns. Uh, and we're having this orange volume on one side and this other one, and they're talking to each other. Uh, this side, uh, this part is uh, restaurants and a little bit of hotel, and then most of it is uh, our apartments. And then the back, these are, I guess, uh, offices at the, at the bottom and then apartments at the, at the top, this uh, other tower. There's a plan, it's very, very simple. Oh, and that's it. Well, thank you very much. I think uh, <coughs> what happens and uh, is understanding the how you build the things, and that that at the end is very very important. When you're doing a saucepan, the the aspects of how how to do it are are very different than when you're doing a vase, a glass vase, and you have to understand the process of how things get built in order to uh, to adjust the scale. And I, I guess at the end. The scale is very important, and the things you remember are the very, very small things. You, know, you remember the, the doorknob, the part of the building you touch. So we're very sensitive to, uh, to designing from the very small things to the big things. And uh, uh, the process of construction would be very important. You know, how, how you blow glass in order to have the, the final shape of the, of, the, of the object, or how you, you construct the building. And what an important issue is. And at, at the end, when you're doing architecture, many, many components come into, into the thing. Now, the context, views, uh, orientation, uh, the possible uh, construction technologies that are available, uh, and they vary tremendously. You know, from the country, from the Valle de Bravo, that uh, construction is, uh, is very poor, uh, and te well, technology is very poor, to Acapulco or Mexico City, where you have much more possibility of using technology. So all this comes into, uh, into account. Uh, of course, uh, function, and uh, eventually all that, you blend that into a, a mixer and eventually come out with a, with a solution. So it, it, it's really like uh, interpreting all those ideas you have and then uh, having a solution. And uh, the, the interesting thing is even after 20 years, you could imagine when you start a project you have a clear idea. but. Uh, I have seen that uh, you have to try it. You have to start working, making sketches, making models, trying, and uh, the result is never easy, an easy result. Sometimes it looks as if it's very easy at the end, but, uh, but it's, a, it's a long process, and it's uh, probably the way of m calling it would be by approximation. Little by little you, you approach and you start understanding, and little by little it leads you to a res result, but it's very hard to know from the beginning how it will turn out. Well, I've been teaching for, uh, for uh, like 17 years, I guess uh, similar to, um, to my professional practice. And uh, until now, I had uh, I had been professor, and uh, of course, when you're working with students, you always have a very clear and very uh, fresh, I would say, uh, view of things. So it's very refreshing. Uh, now that I'm director of the of the school, it's it's been very different uh, because when you're teaching, you only see one class and where you want that class to be able to go. 
and you, you're expecting all the, re re the results. But when you're dean of a school, the, the interesting thing is that you have to see the overall direction of the school. And uh, so it's a very different uh, attitude. Uh, and, you want, and, and what you want the, the students at the end to uh, be able to, uh, to know. Uh, and uh, I believe for, uh, for the practice, it's much more enriching to be teaching than to be, uh, than to be director of a school. Uh, because you have this approach with the students and uh, you don't, and, and when you're dean or director, uh, you have to worry with uh, raising money and syndicates and uh, professors and papers. And so it's, it's not that fun. The interesting thing is being able to direct the school, the, the direction you take. Uh, but yeah, the, the students, uh, I usually I teach a, a project studio. So it's, uh, it's very uh, refreshing, let's say, no? that you have uh, some, uh, some views that sometimes you, you, uh, you are surprised. And I guess it's a process that uh, the students and the professors at the same time are learning, uh, which is nice. Uh, you spoke about uh, how some of your grants have been assigned relatively uh, in funding uh, in some sectors and in other are open sectors. Uh, that's not the case with your assignment. But uh, you also deal with a lot of jobs. So what and how does work for the natural environment and uh, for the sunshine and the trees that are a warm summer? And um, uh, it, it does it require a lot of air conditioning. Uh, <coughs> the interesting thing in Mexico City is Mexico City is uh, uh, over 6,000 feet in the mountains. So it's not a hot city. It's a very temperate city. And uh, from, uh, from winter, well, there's really no winter and no summer. The whole year, the temperature is more or less the same and it's very temperate. So in, uh, in Mexico City, most buildings have either no heating and no air conditioning. Uh, so it's throughout the year. So the, the only difference would be the raining season and the dry season. But that's, that's the maximum uh, changes throughout the year. Here when you come to the US and you can have, a, you have a spring and that's really clear and you have a summer and you have a, well, a, a fall and you have a, uh, the winter. And each season is, uh, is really different. Over there, because of that, uh, double glazing doesn't even exist. So glazing is single glazing that gives you a lot of p possibilities for uh, corners can be much more transparent, margins are of course much smaller, uh, and most of the buildings just work with, uh, with ventilation, natural ventilation. Very few of them have, uh, have air conditioning. Uh, the only difference would be like in certain months in the School of Theater, that canyon is directed into a, uh, the wind in, the, in January and February comes from the north, and that's the only difference, so it doesn't go into that tunnel. For the rest of the year, the wind comes east to west and goes through it, uh, but that's a major difference. So most of the buildings are solved with natural, natural ventilation. Uh, so the glass really is no, no issue. The, like in Valle de Bravo, the weekend house, again, the weather is very nice, but because it's south, there the, the canopy sticks out and protects the, the glass, and uh, something very strange happened in that house. The, the town, most of the houses are very, very cold because of the slopes, the slope of the roof and the little windows and the very thick walls. And this house, by being most of glass, most glazed, has a very nice weather. So it's uh, very, very temperate. And uh, there's no, uh, most of the houses have chimneys and this house doesn't need any chimney and uh, it doesn't need any air conditioning either. So it's, uh, it works very, very nicely. And uh, yeah, those, uh, those buildings work well with the temperature. Uh, at the same time, there's a very big difference in, uh, in the codes. The, our seismic codes are really, really hard. They're uh, uh, as hard as the, as the codes in Japan. But then the rest of the codes are very, very loose, which gives you a lot of freedom. Uh, we don't have ADA. Uh, there's no such thing as uh, liability. The, nobody has heard ever of a client suing an architect. So those things allow you to do much more experimentation. Now here sometimes it's very hard to do because you're, you're sure to be sued uh, 
uh, very, very soon. So that allows you uh, or gives you lots of chance of uh, trying different things. I didn't understand. No. Oh, the big kind. Yeah, and uh, it's an image uh, just to show it was uh, this building filled with people. No. No. Well, we wanted to, uh, uh, well, how it works first, let's say. Uh, the, the whole house becomes, uh, becomes the structure. The two walls of the, of the volume become the, the structure. On one side, where it's glazed, we have no diagonals. So it's just the vertical columns and the, and the horizontal beams that form the, the home structure. And on the other wall that is, uh, that is carved in stone, we have diagonals. So that helps a lot. Uh, the, the stability of the, and the rigidity of the house. When we just put the, the beams, we just uh, put the, the first slab and the house was, uh, was moving sideways with the wind. And if you jumped, it could, uh, it could vibrate. Uh, when we put the second slab, it was still moving. Not as much, but it was still moving. Uh, the engineer had said that uh, the, we, we had to raise the, the beams five centimeters because the weight of the house would, uh, would, uh, would lower its, well, the weight of the thing would lower its five centimeters. When finally the whole thing was, uh, was set and, the gla and, the, and the mol all the mullions and the glazing system were, uh, were fit in place, the house eventually uh, fell five centimeters, so exactly now it's perfectly uh, uh, horizontal. And uh, as soon as the concrete started uh, getting uh, hard, the vibration stopped and the movement stopped. So it's very kind of strange. It took several, several days, but then little by little, the house started uh, understanding how to work and finally it's, uh, it's very stable. And it's being held by two huge walls on the back, uh, on the vestibule between the, the water, the fountain, we have two concrete walls that are holding those, uh, those beams. Uh, but the walls, they're concrete, so the only thing is they're a little bit thicker than normal, but uh, it's impossible to see them. So it's, you have the idea of this thing sticking out. And what we, we wanted to show was that uh, you could have these two volumes. One of them is private uh, bedrooms and the privacy of the house that was lying on the floor. And then to have that the public part of the house was this more exciting volume that could be really be sticking out. And that could give us opportunities to have the garden underneath, the fountain, the part of the terrace. Uh, and uh, it could, is we, we wanted to show the differentiation between the private and the public. You know, how this thing sticking out was the, the, the place where you could invite people, invite friends, and uh, that was a very different situation from the very pr private part of the family.
Oh, you kept so many. I had a <coughs> I had an office in New York, and uh, we did several projects, and uh, not all of them uh, happened. One of them that happened was a house in uh, in San Diego, and the other one was a parking uh, parking structure for Princeton University uh, that was finally built. Uh, the strange thing with the Princeton uh, parking was that uh <coughs> the people from the man management from the university wanted the parking, so they bought a parking structure that is out of well, I don't know, out of the shelf or whatever, and they presented that to the board of trustees of the university, and the board of trustees said, ah, that's horrible. There's no way you're gonna build this thing. So th uh, then the, those guys had already bought the parking thing, so they said, well, what can we do? It's not built yet, but, so they called us, and uh, we were hired to do the thinnest building ever, to do just the skin around the parking. So we presented a, a project to the trustees where we were uh, uh, wrapping the structure in a stainless steel uh, fabric that uh, could change again with the seasons and, uh, and the day and, and day and night. At day, it became totally opaque because of how it reflected light, and at night it became very transparent because of the lights inside of the parking space, allowing uh, for security, that there was a big concern for the university. And then in winter, as soon after it uh, rained, the water could, uh, could uh, freeze. So the building was covered in this, little, in th in this thin uh, film of, uh, of ice. So the building could be changing with, uh, with the seasons. Then we finished the project, and then <coughs> uh, one day they called us. I said, oh, they're gonna tell us that uh, construction is about to start. They told us the construction is finished. Uh, when, are you f when are you coming? How construction is finished? Uh, really, you are involved in construction to see how, no, no, it's finished, we're, we're done, it looks great. <laughs> uh, after that, we, we were invited to do uh, several GSA uh, competitions for courthouses. Uh, so I was the first, uh, I guess, non-American architect to do GSA projects. Uh, I did three competitions with them, uh, and none of them happened. Uh, two of them were won by, by Antoine Fredoc, and the third one, I don't remember what happened to that third one. Uh, after that, I was doing a house in, uh, in San Francisco, and then I can tell you about the cost. In Mexico, in Mexico let's say, construction cost would be between 500 and $1,000 per square meter. A square meter is more or less 10 square feet. So that would be between uh, 50 to, uh, to $100 per square feet. And uh, when we did the project for the house in San Francisco, the cost estimator, once we had a meeting with him and the client, and says the square meter price is $8,000, which is $800, so it was like, eight times more expensive that, uh, than we uh, were used to. So I was really surprised and really in a state of panic. Uh, that's, and okay, not, not, that's what I expected. Uh, my house would be $5 million. So it's, uh, there's a very big difference. So you can imagine that maybe it wouldn't be such a bad thing to uh, build a house in Mexico just close to the border, have some wheels and some platforms and somehow <laughs> bring it to the, to the US uh, and the other thing that is kind of silly is that you have tornadoes and you built out of wood. And then of course, every time there's a tornado, the whole house goes out. And we have uh, earthquakes and we built out concrete and stone. So every time there's an earthquake, the whole thing crumbles. If we switched and uh, you'd be building in concrete and stone, the tornadoes would not do anything to your buildings. And if we built the way you do, after an earthquake, just remove a piece of the sheetrock and you'll be okay. So maybe we're doing things uh, the, uh, the wrong way, both of us. Well, thank you for being a pleasure.